There's a quote I want to share. I am a great admirer of mystery and magic. Look at this life. All mystery and magic. This quote was by Harry Houdini. Folks, how would you create magical moments when you're conversing with another person? What kind of space do you create to invite others to be heard, to be seen, and to feel understood? There's another quote I want to share. Through my research, I found that vulnerability is the glue that holds relationships together. It's the magic sauce. This quote was by Brene Brown. Folks, in today's episode, I'm going to share a secret about what I've learned in being a magician. I'm also going to share how magic has taught me how to create a safe space that allows people to experience magical moments and a technique I call circuit breakers. Let's cue the intro. Welcome to the Boom Vision Podcast. The show that empowers you to live an enriching life physically, mentally, and spiritually. I am your host, Benjamin Ye, and I created this podcast to give you perspectives on how to strengthen your mindset so that you can build optimal health, create aligned wealth, and connect with your higher self. It's all interconnected. Let's get to work. Hi folks, welcome to episode 76 of the Boom Vision Podcast. Today's topic came up a few times these past few weeks, so intuitively I just knew that it's going to help others when we talk about it. So let's just dive right in. Today's topic centers around how to create safe zones in conversations, how to hold that intentional space so that magic can happen. And so I want to first start in sharing what I've learned personally as a magician. One of the lessons I've learned is that depending on the magic effect that you want to perform in front of a crowd, there's a thing called line of sight. So what is that? The definition of line of sight is the boundaries of where you want your audience to be ideally sitting or standing in order to experience the magic. For example, if you're performing stage magic, your line of sight may be around 120 degrees in front of you, where you don't want your audience to be sitting either by your side or behind you, because that would be outside your line of sight. If you are performing, let's say, close-up magic or sleight of hand, your line of sight may be much larger so that the people could be sitting right next to you because your magic effect doesn't necessarily have any bad angles. And so when I think about line of sight, I think about three different zones, right? I think about the first one is a safe zone. It's everything within your line of sight. It is safe for people to view and experience your magic to the fullest. Then there's a second area of what I call the red zone. This is pretty much right at the boundaries of your line of sight. So ideally, if you're performing to a group of friends or people that you know, if you have other magician friends, you probably want them to be sitting close to where the red zones are because that might have a bad angle that might not be as magical for your audience. And then the third zone is what I call the no-fly zone. This is outside of your line of sight. This is outside of those boundaries where really the magic really starts diminishing because you're right in those bad angles, depending on the type of magic you're performing. And so why am I sharing this lesson I've learned from magic? How does this relate to today's topic about creating magical experiences? Well, how this translate when I've had different group conversations is the principles are very much similar. There are what I call safe zones or safe fly zones. It's areas of conversation where you can have a very engaging chat with one person or in a group because it's within a safe zone. Everyone feels safe in talking in this zone. And then there might be certain topics or words that 
might be sort of borderline in the red zone. It might bring tension or emotions in a conversation where there might be some more energies in a topic being talked about. But sometimes that tension could be safe. Sometimes those tension could be helpful to expand different points of view, different perspectives. And then there's the third zone, which is the no-fly zone. When you go past the red zone, when the energy is just so spiked or high, if you speak in a no-fly zone, what tends to happen is that the audience member, the people in the conversation, they might not feel safe. They might start closing their ears. They might start discounting what you say because they don't feel safe in this space of conversation. And so generally speaking, if you are being mindful and cultivating the space for magic to happen, you want to generally fly in the safe zone. You want to occasionally be in a red zone to be able to expand perspectives, but 80, 90% of the time, you want to be in a safe zone so that people can feel safe in an engaging conversation. But sometimes, depending on the topic, it might be triggering. You might go to the no-fly zone. So what do you do in those situations? So this leads to a technique I call circuit breakers. So what is that? A definition of a circuit breaker is a switch that automatically interrupts the current of an overloaded electrical circuit, ground faults, or short circuits. So in other words, when the energy starts to surge, you use circuit breakers to be able to break that cycle, to be able to break that flow. It redirects the energy. It redirects the attention. So what are examples of that? If you are in a group setting, perhaps one of the ways when you're noticing that the energy of the flow of conversation is starting to be in a red and it might go into the no-fly zone, one of the things you can say if you're facilitating in a group setting is, hey, perhaps we're just doing a quick time check. We're probably halfway through in the meeting. Why don't right now we just take a one quick restroom break or water break? And by allowing that space for people to take a break, it allows the time and space for people to actually process their emotions so that doesn't get overcharged. That could be one technique in a group setting. Another example is let's say you're just having one-on-one conversation with someone and you're talking about a perspective where you might disagree with what they say, but it's starting to get emotionally charged. It's flying in the red zone, maybe in a no-fly zone. So one way to be able to implement a circuit breaker in that situation could be, you know, let me just repeat what I heard from you and try to summarize it within one sentence. Because when you're able to repeat in summary of what someone says, you're basically acknowledging them. Hey, I understood and I heard you because I'm gonna repeat what I heard. Let me know if that captures the essence of what you're sharing. And in repeating that and acknowledging that, may I also share how I feel about that too. By doing this, this invites people in this conversation into the safe zone space to have a healthy dialogue where disagreements or different perspectives can coexist with respect. And then another circuit breaker that you can do is what I call left field questions. So what is an example of that? If someone's talking about something you might necessarily agree with, but you know what? Hey, let me ask you something. What if the opposite of what you want happens? Are you willing to explore that possibility? You might be really set on a certain perspective, but what if the opposite happens? So I'll give you an example. Let's say you're talking to someone where they just want to go fast, right? Their tempo, their rhythm is going fast, but you might not necessarily resonate with that tempo in that given situation. So what if you just ask a left field question? It's like, hey, can I ask you something? What if in this situation, you actually need to go slower in order to go faster? Is that even possible? If you're going so fast, Like when I think about being like on a really fast boat, right? And you've got wind blowing against your face, but because it's so fast and the wind's blowing, it's so loud, it's hard to hear the people around you. Hey, what if we actually slow down in case someone actually has the advice to course correct because you're going off track? If you're going so fast where you can't even hear the people that's on your boat, 
you might have to always course correct, but when you're already a mile away, that's different from the direction you're going to, right? But if you're able to go a little bit slower, where the wind isn't so loud, you can hear the people around you. Hey, being able to course correct quickly can actually allow you to go faster to where you both want to go. And part of these left field questions is really to give the other person just a moment of pause to reflect. Is a new possibility possible? Do they have the awareness and space to allow new possibilities to come in? And so the practice and mastery of creating a safe space, a safe zone for people to discuss different perspectives, this really gives you the power to create magical moments when you can mindfully facilitate the energy of the conversation. And so at the root of this, I just want you to think about this question. Do you intentionally create safe zones when you go into a conversation, whether it's one-on-one or in a group setting? Do you have go-to circuit breakers that you can implement when you feel the energy of the conversation is going towards the red or no-fly zone? And so with that said, what are this week's action steps to help you create space where magical moments can be experienced. I want to use the CAL method, C-A-L method. So C, calm yourself. Calm yourself in a way that works for you. Is it walking in nature? Is it going around the block? Is it breath work? Whatever it is, find a way to be able to just calm your mind. And in that calm state, A stands for awareness. Bring awareness to the energy level of the topics you're about to talk about, or maybe the people that you're about to engage a conversation with. Is the topic or the people you talk to, do they tend to fly in a safe zone? Do they tend to fly in a red zone? Or do they tend to fly in a no-fly zone? Having that awareness allows you to be prepared and how to create that space. And then L stands for language. I want you to ask yourself these questions. The first question is, do I have the intention of creating a safe zone for people to experience magic? Is that my intention when I have this conversation? And the second question I want you to ask yourself is, do I have the right level of energy and mindset to hold the space for magic to happen? Why is this question important? If you are currently feeling depleted or low in energy, you might not be able to hold a space for the one-on-one conversation in a group. I want you to be able to tune in to be aware of your current state of energy. Because if you truly do not have the energy to hold that space, maybe you can share that with a fellow facilitator or simply just share it with the person you're going to talk to. Remember the Brene Brown quote I shared in the beginning. Vulnerability is the glue that holds relationships together. It's the magic sauce. Perhaps sharing what you are feeling internally at that moment, you can invite and call people in to a loving space rather than feeling like you're going to be called out. I'm going to say that again. When you're able to share what you feel internally, you're basically inviting people to call in to a loving space rather than being called out. I want to credit my buddy Mike Belcher here, who shared this beautiful language of calling people in rather than calling out. Because I feel it's such a great perspective of what space you intentionally create. So final thoughts for today's episode. There's a quote I want to share. When you're touched by magic, nothing's ever quite the same again. What really makes me sad is all those people who never have the chance to know that touch. They're too busy or they just don't hold with make-believe. So they shut the door without really knowing it was there to be opened in the first place. This quote was by Charles DeLint. Folks, I hope today's episode inspires you to see, to think, and create differently. Magic happens when you hold the space intentionally so that the possibilities for it can occur. Being mindful of what space you hold 
mentally, verbally, and spiritually can make a difference on how others will experience their interaction with you. Do you intentionally create an environment for people to feel magic? I love to hear your thoughts. Send me a DM on Instagram at Benjamin Ye if this episode resonates with you. And if you enjoyed today's episode, I encourage you to rate and review this show on Apple Podcasts so that others can find this resource in helping them to thrive in life. Until next time, folks, be kind to yourself. Be in delight. Be you. Thank you so much for tuning in to my Boom Vision podcast. If you'd like to find out more about me in this podcast, head over to benjaminye.com. That's spelled B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N-Y-E-H.com. If you haven't already, click subscribe and I'll catch you next time.